Live from Case at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Tonight, a local mother wants answers after her son's blood was drawn at school without her permission or even knowledge. This happened earlier this week at MacArthur High School, and several students were involved. She spoke to our RJ Marquez and tells us that she wants Northeast ISD to make sure this never happens again. Liz Hernandez got home from work late Tuesday and found something strange in her fridge. And I open the fridge the next day to find the vial in the refrigerator. Now, apparently they have a phlebotomy class. I didn't even know that was a thing in high school. Liz's son Lorenzo is a sophomore at MacArthur High School. He told her that some seniors asked students on Tuesday to volunteer to give blood. There was people standing in line outside of the classroom, about nine or ten people, and they each went in one at a time having their blood drawn. And the district tells us that the students conducting those blood draws were in a health science clinicals class and that there were about 20 students that had their blood drawn without permission. The district is investigating and has not taken any disciplinary action against anyone involved. Liz tells us that she wants to see the district and the high school take responsibility and be accountable for what happened. I'm shocked and I'm very appalled because like I said, I've never heard of a case like this. The principal contacted parents on Thursday confirming the phlebotomy students were, quote, doing this unsupervised. An NEISD spokesperson said equipment like needles or syringes were prepackaged and never left the classroom. They added a teacher was going between two health classes, leaving one not fully supervised. Hernandez says it's all unsettling because of the safety and health concerns. We don't see where these needles came from. We don't see if they've been sterilized. We can't see if it's a, a new needle. Like, we have to trust and put our faith in these people. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. In other news tonight, it was deja vu for firefighters working at a boarded up home this morning. Someone called 911 around 2.30 about the fire at a home on the 600 block of Torreon Street near Lanier, which is on the west side. When firefighters got there, flames were shooting from the home. Now it had been boarded up, so that made things difficult for crews to get in. But eventually they did put it out. Thing is, this isn't the first time they fought a fire at that specific location. They still don't know the extent of the damage inside, but here's the good news. Nobody was hurt. A teenager is accused of shooting into a Converse home because of a fight with a man who lives there. 18-year-old Matthew Connor Sauceda is charged with a felony. According to an arrest record, Sauceda fired six shots into that home and a car January 23rd. When a vehicle involved in the drive-by was, drive was found, police found a 12-gauge shotgun and phones belonging to two suspects. Sauceda was arrested on Thursday. A man charged with the 1999 murder of his wife was sentenced to 20 years in prison today as part of a plea deal. Roy Hernandez was arrested and charged in 2017. His wife, Deidre Salinas, disappeared in 99, but it would take investigators six years to find her body but there wasn't evidence to charge Hernandez until 2017. Now, he was expected to go to trial last year, but was diagnosed with terminal cancer. The case was reset. Well, today, Hernandez accepted a 20-year plea deal on that murder charge. He must serve half before he is eligible for parole. A man woke up to black smoke filling his northwest side apartment. Fortunately, San Antonio fire crews put that fire out without any injuries, but Arcamelia Juarez tells us why several families are now devastated. Thick, dark clouds of smoke coming from the Oak Creek apartments. This is what San Antonio fire crews saw when they arrived in the 6100 block of Vance Jackson just after 1.30 today. Josiah lives on the second floor. He says he woke up to the smell of smoke. I mean, it was already too black to see anything. He says the flames consumed his apartment. I just know that the flames coming from my kitchen all the way into my dining room area. Shocked by the fire, he says he sprung into action to save others. I was able to get my dog. I came and got my neighbors out of the house. San Antonio Fire Rescue says everyone was able to make it out in time, including a small dog. Firefighters were concerned the fire would spread to nearby apartments apartment homes, so it upgraded its response. Firefighters used ladder trucks to help fight the fire. San Antonio Fire spokesperson Joe Arrington says at least eight units are impacted and seven families, some with children, are looking for a place to stay. We're working with apartment management to try to get folks relocated here locally. There are a few that won't be able to, they don't have enough units, so we're working with the Red Cross to get them shelter while the apartment management company finds them somewhere else to go. So everyone will be taken care of and find shelter this evening. Most of the units were damaged by water and smoke. It's unclear how much the damage will cost. Josiah is now planning his next steps. Try to find somewhere else to go. 
Investigators are still working to find out what caused the fire. Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Now switching to politics, San Antonio's May 6th ballot is now set. The filing period to run for the mayor's seat or one of the 10 council districts closed about an hour ago and 59 candidates threw their hat in the ring. But City Hall reporter Garrett Berger tells us that some of those races have attracted more challengers than others. There is one district in front of all the others in terms of being a crowded field. That's District 2 over on the east side, a seat currently held by first term councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez. It's a tumultuous district, having elected four different council members in the previous four regular elections. Challengers this time around include at least one neighborhood group president, a former mayoral candidate, and the former head of the Baptist Ministers Union. I think year after year, I mean, year after year, we people kind of get frustrated with leadership and I know we, we want to get some leadership in that that's going to stay eight years. As you can see, District 1 has nearly as many candidates as does the mayor's race, which is always a popular one. Districts 7 and 10 are wide open and have also drawn decent crowds of candidates. Anna Sandoval resigned her seat last month while embattled Councilman Clayton Perry announced yesterday he will not be running again. A controversial ballot initiative, though, may end up help driving voter turnout even more. Proposition A, which was proposed as the so-called San Antonio Justice Charter, will put attempts to decriminalize marijuana and abortion in front of voters, though the city attorney says most of its proposals are not enforceable. At City Hall, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. It's not a scenario you think of when it comes to a car chase, a dog getting tased. But that's what happened this morning. Katrina Weber explains how San Antonio police say this all started with a stolen car. It looked like all hands on deck after two people took off on foot downtown from a car that San Antonio police say was stolen. One officer stopped it after noticing it in the area of Elmira and Jackson streets shortly before five this morning. But police say that is when the chase was on with the two suspects running away. Less than a block from where they started, it came to an end with them in custody and an officer in pain. Police say he hurt his knee in the chase. They say a suspect also was checked out after he struggled with the officers and the troubles didn't end with people. In the middle of all this, police brought in a canine unit to search this area for evidence. They say a neighborhood dog went after that canine and they had to use a taser on that neighborhood dog. No animals were seriously hurt either and police eventually found what they were searching for. But there are still some questions that are not answered, including whether those suspects also are responsible for stealing that car. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on that suspected Chinese spy balloon. Recovery operations for that balloon have ended. Today, the U.S. military released a statement saying the balloon was taken to the FBI lab in Virginia for counterintelligence exploitation. U.S. Northern Command said all Navy and coast vessels have left the area and safety perimeters are lifted. The balloon was shot down off the coast of South Carolina earlier this month. The U.S. said the balloon is part of a large fleet controlled by the Chinese military for spying in more than 40 countries. Now back here at home, we have some good news now. We're so excited to tell you about this. This is courtesy of Trans Guide, a shot that's uh, 90 west at Zarzamora. And you know what you see there? Progress. Yes. So when we spoke to you during the five o'clock news, I mean, the eastbound lanes had been shut down. They'd been shut down for about three hours. But look, they're now back open. We're told that there was some sort of a multi-vehicle crash. We never quite got a lot of information on that. But the point is that traffic is going well, at least in, in both directions, at least compared to how it was before, even though it does look pretty heavy. But hey, it is Friday. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't going at all a few minutes ago. All right, let's take another look outside. Beautiful way to end the week, although chilly. So now we're all focused on the temperatures for the weekend, Adam. Oh, and it's going to be a cool start to the weekend. You'll feel the chill in the air, that's for sure, especially the first half of the weekend. Today, 35 this morning, officially for the low, then a high temperature of only 56, where the average is 68. Right now we're 52, Port SA, Helotus at 50. Seguin 53, Comfort 51, and 54 in Hondo. So cool out there. And temperatures only falling off from here, of course, this evening. By 8 o'clock down to 46, 10 o'clock 42. Long sleeves and or a jacket if you're venturing out this evening and tonight. And that goes for tomorrow morning as well. We'll have those morning readings 
in the lower 30s right near freezing briefly early tomorrow morning. We'll be back to talk about when the warming trend begins and the next system we're watching that could bring us a shot at rain in just a bit. Adam, thank you. Now, coming up later, make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into, at least when it comes to online dating, because one woman, a local woman, shares her story of how she was scammed out of thousands of dollars in cryptocurrency. Plus, a man who suffered a cardiac arrest at an HEB reunites with the store employees who helped him. See their heartwarming reunion coming up next. Tonight, we're going to tell you this amazing story. A mother was stabbed while fighting to get her child back. A stranger grabbed her three-year-old son outside of a Northside apartment complex. But as it turns out, the suspect in this case is a student athlete at the University of the Incarnate Word. We're going to tell you how the mother got her child back. Also, at the ripe old age of 18, a young woman is campaigning for a seat on the New Braunfels School Board. We're introducing you to the teen who's focused on education and improving it for the next generations. Her motivation and what she says she can contribute. Those stories and so much more tonight on The Night Beat. New at six, the quick action by a couple of HEB partners last month helped save the life of a 57-year-old customer who'd gone into cardiac arrest. Jesse Degollado says today he got to thank everyone who played a part, especially those HEB employees who knew just what to do. A grateful Daniel Inahosa thanked the EMTs whose job it is to save lives. It took over when two HEB partners left off at the Austin Highway store where Inahosa had collapsed in the produce section. I remember hearing just a loud crash, a loud crash followed by just a loud scream. I saw him go down. I thought he trips, so I ran over there. So thank you very much. Good to finally meet you. Appreciate it. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, it's nice to meet you while I'm not on the pleasure. ground. Yes, yes, Inahosa had suffered cardiac arrest and wasn't breathing, but thankfully both White and Rainey had gotten CPR training where they'd previously worked. The CPR training just kind of kicked in. We, we just started administering CPR. That's just God's will. I just blessed instrument hand. You're essentially working for the heart. Cardiologist Dr. Jorge Alvarez treated Inojosa when he arrived at Methodist Hospital. So the CPR helped because it helped to maintain uh, blood flow to his brain and to his other vital organs. It's really not hard, but with enough practice you can impress your friends and save a life. It's easy, it's effective, and it's just the right thing to do. You have to apply a lot of force, uh, probably more force than you think you have to. Uh, and if you break something, it's okay, we'll fix it. Whatever it took, Inohosa's wife and the daughter who was there appreciate everything that was done to save his life that day. And so does he. Appreciation for the fact that people knew what they were doing. Jesse De Rollado, KSAT 12 News. Now, a warning about looking for love on dating apps. Romance scammers are on there, too, and what they want to steal is not your heart, but your money. Beth Hutchinson is a kindergarten teacher who says a man on Bumble scammed her. After a few weeks of messaging, he then offered to teach her about investing and cryptocurrency. And so you showed me how to, you know, take money from my account, turn it into Bitcoin, and then be able to start using it to trade and whatnot on the New York Stock Exchange except it wasn't the real New York Stock Exchange. It was a fake site. But now she's out more than $6,000. And here's the thing, she's not alone because romance crypto scams are pretty hot. In the U.S. right now, victims have so far lost more than $139 million in those scams in just last year. Oof. All right, let's talk about the weekend forecast. Yes, it is chilly out there right now. Partly going to stay that way for the weekend, but there's some hope for people wanting warmer weather. Yes. Yeah, and you know, if you want to throw a few logs in the fire ring in the backyard, you know, right? If you have a fireplace, we, tonight's we, a good got night. <laughs> you do have some options, yes. Uh, tonight's a good night for that to stay warm. Near freezing again tomorrow morning, warming trend that begins on Sunday. And then we've got one chance for rain. We'll talk about that system that we're watching and the newest drought monitor in just a moment. I want to take a live look outside because this cloud deck that we have, some mid clouds, some high clouds, will make for a stunning sunset this evening just within 
the next 30 minutes, we should see some pretty good color out there bouncing off and reflecting off the base of those clouds. 51 degrees, dew point of 17. We have the dry air in place. And it, because of that north wind, which is now at 8 miles per hour, was gustier earlier today. Not quite as breezy right now. It's good. The wind has subsided and it will be calm overnight tonight. But these dew points in the teens signifies the very dry air that's in place. It's going to be like this again tomorrow. So chapped lips, maybe some dry skin, and it'll be the case tomorrow starting to change Sunday and by Tuesday of next week, it's actually going to be a little sticky and muggy outside. I mean, even along the Gulf Coast, at Corpus Christi, a dew point of 22, Houston, a dew point of 21, Victoria, 28. They only see dew points like this a couple of times a year, and that's in the winter time. Air temps right now, for the most part, 50s, 50 in Kerrville, 53 Kennedy, down to 49 in LaGrange, but 50 in Rock Springs and 51 in San Antonio. Tomorrow morning, we're 33 degrees downtown, 31 in Uvalde, Pleasanton about 34. You get a little farther north of downtown, Stone Oak 32, Seguin 31, Timberwood Park 30, Bernie 29. You get the idea. A light freeze again for some neighborhoods to start the day tomorrow, kind of like what we had today. And by tomorrow afternoon, we don't warm up a whole lot. We make it into the upper 50s, so just a couple of degrees warmer than what we had earlier today. All in all, looking and feeling a lot like our Friday. However, there will be some increasing clouds coming in from the southwest. Sunday, we're up to 73. Monday, a little closer to 80. Then we're into the 80s by Tuesday and Wednesday. So if you don't like this cold this time of year, don't worry. We've got 83 degrees right around the corner, and it's going to be here on Tuesday with a bit of mugginess in the air. And speaking of mugginess, you know, it takes the humidity to generate some showers. I wish I could say that return of the humidity will bring us a good chance of rain because we need it. You look at the latest drought monitor updated yesterday, by the way, and still the worst drought is right here in our backyard. Most of Bear County, Bandera County, all of Comal County or all of Kendall County, most of Comal County in the exceptional drought, the worst category. You compare it to the rest of South and Central Texas, it's the worst. You compare it to the rest of the state, it's the worst. We're in the worst shape. West Texas, not even abnormally dry. East Texas, not even abnormally dry. So let's talk about our pattern. Clouds over the Pacific. See these streaming over the Baja Peninsula. They're going to continue to increase through tonight and into tomorrow, and they'll give us that filtered sunshine. So it's going to be cool and we'll have some sun, but it's not going to be as effective as it was today when we had a totally clear sky. And that's in advance of this swirl that we have off the California coastline. This is going to drift out there in the Pacific for several more days because it's cut off from the main flow. And then we get what we call a kicker trough, a kicker to come in, open it up and push it our way. And it will throw some energy into Texas, but most of it's going to be north of us by next Tuesday night. So we're looking at only a 20% chance of showers in the foreseeable future. And that comes Tuesday night on into early Wednesday. I wish I wish I even had hopes of raising that, but unfortunately it doesn't look likely. We're just looking at that very slight chance. Dry this weekend, those mid and high clouds tomorrow at 58, then 73 for the high on Sunday. Into next week, we talked about that warmer weather, but also some morning fog. And I think we'll notice that a little bit Sunday, more so Monday and Tuesday with the return of the humidity. All right, thank you, Adam. You know, I look at that and I think indoor weather. <laughs> Sunday, there's a big event happening here at the Alamo Dome, and you got an inside look? We did. Uh, Mark Mendez, sports photographer, went mm -hmm. over to the Alamo Dome today and got some of these sites inside. There's a lot of black and yellow, of course. That's because the Brahmas are going to host their season and home opener coming up on Sunday. And guess what? Dusty Baker, well, he's also back with the Astros coming up. Spurs rookie Jeremy Sohan will play in the Jordan Rising Stars game tonight to tip off NBA All-Star Weekend. Sohan and his teammates held practice today before playing ball tonight. He was drafted by former NBA player Joe Kim Noah. NBA TV mic'd Jeremy up for practice, and it was pretty obvious he's having a great time. And, as he promised, he does have a new color scheme for the game. Here's a video of Jeremy in Salt Lake City, the Spurs tweeted. I feel it get more real, but I think it's, you know, exciting having my family on the, on the private jet. Uh, just my people, I think it's exciting. So I know there's going to be a bunch of people here, so just connecting to, to you know, everyone and I think just having fun. It's going to be fun, so, you know, being around the other rookies, just seeing how their experience is, you know, so far. So I think it's going to be fun to, you know, be, be around them.
Here's the Rising Stars game format. Team Pal will play Team Duran, and Team Joe Kim will face Team Jason. First team to 40 points will advance. The championship game will see the winners of game one and two. The first to 25 points will be crowned champions. Sohan is on Team Joe Kim, and that's tonight at 8. And how about this? The Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame today announced 12 finalists for Class of 2023 election. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich, former Spurs point guard Tony Parker, and WNBA great Becky Hammond are among those to be considered for the Class of 2023. UTSA women's basketball team beat Rice 66-53 last night at the Convocation Center. Jordan Jenkins led the Roadrunners with 25 points and 11 rebounds, her eighth double-double of the season. Sydney Love was next with 13 points. UTSA is 7-17 overall and 5-10 and in Conference USA. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Alamo Dome is getting ready for some XFL football between your San Antonio Brahmas and the St. Louis Battlehawks. Photog Mark Mendez stopped by the Dome today to give us a sneak peek of what's going on inside. And the end zones are painted and ready to go. And some of the Brahmas recently came to town for a meet and greet. And that's when we asked them about playing in the XFL. And if this league can help springboard them to the NFL. I'm grateful for this opportunity. You know, this is another opportunity for me to, you know, uh, put some great things on tape, you know, update my resume in, in a sense. And, um, Hopefully get another shot at the NFL. I mean, yeah, definitely. That's always going to be great. But um, I think first and foremost, my number one goal is to help this team win a championship. And the film will come with it as long as I just do my thing. But um, I want to bring a championship to San Antonio. And, you know, however I can do that, I'm going to do it. Dwayne The Rock Johnson will be here for Sunday's game. He tweeted he will attend all four games this weekend. The Brahmas will host the Battle Hawks Sunday 2 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. Houston Astros skipper Dusty Baker rejoined the team today in West Palm Beach, Florida for spring training. Baker returned to Houston Wednesday where he was honored Wednesday and Thursday nights in separate events. Baker is happy to be back with the guys as they seek to become the first team in 23 years to win back to back World Series. Well, I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to do this uh, and make it number two. You know, I mean, you can't live on, on the laws on the past. It could be difficult. There are other teams that have um, gotten better teams everybody shooting at us. Pitcher Lance McCullers Jr. experienced some elbow soreness after a bullpen session, but Dusty said it's nothing to worry about. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Big weekend for sports yes. in San Antonio. Anybody else got plans? We have some top picks coming your way up next. <laughs> a lot going on. Welcome back. We're super excited because it's Friday and in our KSAT Q&A, a guest who is quickly becoming one of our favorites, Stephanie Guerra. She's a social <laughs> media influencer here in San Antonio. Thank you. The first part of your account, we've kind of figured out a way to do this, right? This first part is puro. Second part, shh, can't say <laughs> because our mothers are watching. But Stephanie, you're always watching for cool things happening in San Antonio. You give us your best picks every weekend. Thank you. So I what try. are some <laughs> you try? There's so many things to do. There are, so but many you things. always give us a good roundup. So there's a couple of Mardi Gras things happening this weekend. Yes. Um, so I'm not sorry. We have lots of Mardi Gras fun events. There is Mardi paws um which is for the animals uh -huh. but it's a very fun event they have a pet parade and a costume contest i've actually taken my little pup ruby before um, my mom made her a special hat and uh, it was really fun she won we won a lot of prizes they're having that this year at the dakota um, and then there's also a Mardi Gras event at Dog and Pony Grill in Bernie. So I know it's a little drive outside of San Antonio, but it is a very fun place with a big outdoor patio. They're going to have special New Orleans style food. They will have drinks. They're going to have bare brass band playing. So it'll feel like you've got a little taste of New Orleans right in outside of San Antonio. <laughs> now there's, there's another party. Uh, there's the 25th annual United San Antonio Pow Wow. What's up with that? Yeah, so so um, the American Indians in Texas, um, it's not a Mardi Gras event, but definitely cultural and part of our heritage yes, for sure, is having the event um, both Saturday and Sunday at San Antonio College. Mm -hmm. So this is their annual gathering where they bring community together to experience the traditions and culture, music, art, and food of American Indians. And they have a huge community, obviously, here in San Antonio. We have deep roots, and it's a really great free way to go celebrate. Speaking of culture, of course, we're still in Black History Month. There is an event that really is geared towards celebrating that. 
Yes. So um, there is a art play, art gallery called Bill House. Um, been around in San Antonio for a long time. They are having a poetry reading with Sansory and Murray. They're also going to have live music. I love all of the Black History events in San Antonio. It's a key part of our history, and it's on Fredericksburg Road, so it's in the center of the city, and Fredericksburg Road is a great part of Black History also in San Antonio. So that's going to be another amazing free event tomorrow. And what, what events do you think are more tailored towards smaller kids? Oh, man, smaller kids. So I would definitely take your kids and your fur kids to Marty Paul Pet Parade. Mm -hmm. um, you can definitely do the Sunday Fun Day at Dog and Pony, even though it's a bar and grill. They have a huge playground and a big back patio where the bands will play. And then um, American Indians in Texas annual powwow is for everybody. Um, you know, they invite people of all ages to come celebrate culture and heritage. Um, there is one more Marty Year event that is Next not Tuesday. kid friendly <laughs> on Fat Tuesday. Yes. Um, that is going to be full of libations and food and drinks from 16 of the some of the best chefs in San Antonio, gumbo. even some of our, Excuse sorry, me, gumbo, uh, gumbo cook-off, Fat, Fat Tuesday. Um, and it's going to be at the Good Kind South Town. Uh -huh. um, there will be um, over... 50 samples of food, I believe. There's gonna have all kinds of gumbo from those 16 chefs. There's five judges, I'm one of them. David Elder's one of them. Nice. There's gonna be a lot of fun and three winners. Um, those tickets are $50, but think all you can eat gumbo all night long in the heart of downtown San Antonio. You've got a great view of the tower in this tropical lush landscape. And it is on Fat Tuesday. So more of New Orleans, our sister city right here in San Antonio. Yeah, you could make yeah. a meal out of 50 samples. And that's <laughs> it, right? Yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot. There's also an event that got my attention on your list, uh, having something to do with disco. That is going to be a fun <laughs> party night. So you don't necessarily have to bring out your bell bottoms, but you can if you want to. There is a local DJ group called The Soul Spot, and they've been around in San Antonio, now celebrating their 13th anniversary tomorrow night at the Lighthouse Lounge, which is right Right next to Woodlawn Lake in the heart of the west side of San Antonio. They play the best disco, house, funk, all kinds of jams, and people actually get out and dance. I know everybody is always like, where can I go dance nowadays? Um, you have to be 21 to get in, but um, there's people of all ages. I actually go with my parents. They used to be disco king and queen here in San I Antonio, love that. and yes. it is a lot of fun. That is very I hope cool. to see y'all out there. So, I mean, let's go. Let's, yeah. so let me ask you this, because you're always in the know. You know what's going on around, around San Antonio. What's really the most fun time of year when it comes to activities here? Ooh, that's I'm just curious. When it's not cold. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, you can't deny Fiesta. Fiesta in yes. April, I'm so looking forward to this year. It's a little bit later this year. It starts April 20th. Um, I'm an April baby, so it's always been a really fun time. Plus, it's spring in San Antonio. It's not yet 1,000 degrees. Um, and then I really think, you know, the fall season, there is a festival and party and event probably every day in October, November, December. Um, but San Antonio is great most of the year. Luckily, we have mild temperatures. Um, you all would know best, you know, about that. But, I mean, it's it's fun to visit all year long. I think that we've never had really cold temperatures or a lot of rain. Um, even, you know, this weekend in the 50s, most people are afraid of that, but put on a jacket <laughs> and go outside. It's really nice also, to layer up and go out. Also, kind of when you get your sip on, it's just a little, <laughs> it helps a little bit. So Yeah, it saying. helps to not be in a thousand degrees. <laughs> what do we call it? Sweaty confetti sweaty weather? Sweaty confetti. Yeah, that is fiesta. <laughs> sweaty confetti. And it's right. totally worth it. Stephanie, I am looking forward to the weekend every weekend in yes, San Antonio. Yes, thank you. You kind of give us something to look forward to. So thank you Many for being things. here for your puro picks. Thank you. Y'all are my back. favorites. Don't tell Steve. Okay, okay. we won't. <laughs> Nobody tell him. Yes, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, get Thank you so much. We'll be right back after this. <laughs>